Sugar do 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 do. Ah, honey, honey, do 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 do. Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action. We are finally back for a movie update. As you can see, the pile is large, so we're gonna get through it pretty quick. I admit up front that I haven't had a great deal of time to watch a lot of these, so it's gonna be mainly a show and less tell. But anyway, we'll get off and start with the DVDs. The first one is The Ascent. So this one I picked up uh, on recommendation from good friend of ours, Extra the Mutilator. Um, it is a film from Tom Patton. Now, I didn't know who that director is, but he's done another movie called Black Sight. This is also called Black Ops. Um, and it sounds like he's a director to watch out for. So, sci-fi, horror, action. I think I'm gonna get all of it with this one, The Ascent. Looks pretty cool. Fairly recent film, 2019. So yeah, go check this one out, The Ascent. This one, I'm just going in blind. 3022. 3022? I'm not sure. Apparently the film is not set in that year. It's set in like 21 something. Um, but this looks like a fairly interesting thinking science fiction film, which you don't see too much of these days. Low budget film. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't recognize any of the stars or uh, the director or anything like that. But um, I was making a. Uh, making three items for uh, buy two get one free sale at JB and this one looks like it would be interesting so 3022 if you've seen it let me know um, this one oh dear I found this one in the Vinnies for two dollars grim it looks like some pretty pretty cheap uh, probably early 2000s don't know if I'm gonna get a year on this one no maybe late 90s early 2000s um, low budget horror hopefully we get some cool monster and that's not just uh, stuff from the cover it looks like we got some pretty good gore and things like that it is rated ma you gotta do gotta do some special things to get an ma out here so you know medium level violence horror thing and uh yeah stalked by terror driven by the dark only a few will survive it reads a little bit like um uh, the the uh, the descent like uh Lots taking place in a cave, um, so remind me of the descent. So we'll see what grim is like. Maybe it's a grim experience. Haha. -ha. This one I did watch, uh, Itsy Bitsy. This was pretty good. Um, modern, um, sort of small scale horror film. Um, you think from that cover it's going to be about, um, you know, arachnophobia or something. And it, yes, it is about a spider, but it's um, it's a little bit more deep than that. Um, interesting film about uh, what happens when a curse is placed on a house and the uh, the new tenants that live there and you do get to see a pretty cool prosthetic spider on numerous uh, occasions um, yeah it's quite good it's not going to win any uh, major awards or anything but I thought uh, Itsy Bitsy was pretty good kind of disturbing in places and um, yeah the acting was fine so yeah um, give it a go Itsy Bitsy this one uh, well, I got it cheap, so I don't know. This is Rabid, the remake uh, from the Soska sisters. I've heard generally bad things, but a couple of people told me that I might enjoy it. Um, so, you know, I've, I've enjoyed um, some of their previous films. Um, so I'm going in, hopefully, just enjoying this as a horror film and not as a, a remake of a classic. Um, certainly looks like it's going to bring the groove, so that's at least something. Um, so they did this, uh, what, a year or two ago? Yeah, 2019. Um, and the Soska sisters have done, like I said, they've done some interesting things in the past. Um, was it American Mary? Was that one of theirs? I think it was. And uh, uh, Dead Hooker in a Trunk was one of their earlier low budget uh, efforts. And uh, yeah, this is their latest one, Rabbit. So yeah, I'll see what it's like. This one, no idea. Uh, again, this was cheap. It was like a $3 one. Field Guide to Evil. Um, Global exploration into dark folklore and mythology. There you go. Um, from the producers of the ABCs of Death. Now, I enjoyed the first ABCs of Death, so, yeah, there you go. Um, is it a uh, similar kind of film? Eight Terrifying Tales. There you go. So, it is uh, 
it is that style of, um, of film, eight films in one. So, yeah, that should be good. They tend to be pretty good, those films. So, yeah, anything that's similar to Creepshow and all that, Field Guide to Evil. And the last of these DVDs is Snatchers. Uh, I've read a few good things about this one. Horror comedy. Um, that usually rubs me the wrong way. But uh, if it's done right, then it's enjoyable. Um, and I have been hearing this is pretty good. A giddily entertaining horror comedy. Um, it doesn't immediately try and compare itself to Shaun of the Dead, which is always good, because that shits me to tears. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't know a great deal about it. Um, so if you've seen Snatches, do let me know what it's like. Now we're going to kick into the Blu-rays. And the first one here. Man, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Mr. No Legs. Mr. No Legs. Classic. <laughs> uh, 70s exploitation. You just can't beat it. Um, this is from Massacre Video. Um, the slipcover edition, which sold out pretty quickly. I think that's the regular edition you can get now on Amazon and all those places. But... Yes, the slipcover edition is gone. It came with a second alternate cover slip, but I've filed that away for the moment. Um, yeah, this this movie... Um, I watched a VHS rip of this a good 15 years ago, and I don't remember too much about it except for being mental. Um, like, he's in a wheelchair, and he's like got guns in the wheelchair. Mr. No Legs. Um, yeah, I was very excited that Massacre released this one. Uh, when they announced it, um, which was quite a long time ago, and then the pre-orders took ages to show up, and then uh, finally got to order it, and then COVID, and uh, anyway, I finally have Mr. No Legs. I can finally watch it. Um, brand new 2K restoration from the extremely rare French 35mm print, which is better than anything else it's ever had before, so excited to check out the amazing Mr. No Legs. Another one. I was never expecting this to get a Blu-ray. Yeti, giant of the 20th century. Uh, Italian, I think, horror? Science fiction horror? Italian film? Um, I think it is. Yep, Italian King Kong ripoff from 1977. Um, never had a legit digital release. Been on Greek VHS and the like, but this is the first time it's had a proper um, DVD or Blu-ray. This is the first time it's been on disc. Uh, so this is from um, Dark Force, Dark Force Entertainment. Uh, alternate cover art's pretty cool. And it's in one of their glorious boxes they like to boast about. It doesn't glow in the dark, as far as I can tell. What a shame. Um, but uh, another co-production with Code Red, this one. And, yeah. Looking forward to checking out Yeti. I've heard many good things from many people. Uh, I did attempt to watch an old version of it years ago, but uh, the quality was... I couldn't be bothered, it was just pretty rubbish. Um, and I've never owned a copy, so there you go. I get to, get to check out an Italian ripoff of King Kong with a Yeti. Awesome. This I watched. LA Wars from Vinegar Syndrome. There's the uh, new artwork, but I actually quite like what they've done here with the, uh, the old artwork. Uh, 1990 low budget action film. Love how it comes out from the bottom. The, uh, the VSA line that they're doing. So there you go. This is a lot of fun. Um, trying to re-sleeve this, that's not going to happen. Anyway, <clears throat> this is, uh, yeah, 1990, um, very, very low budget uh, crime action film. The main guy, is his name here? Well, he's, the, the character is Jake Quinn. Doesn't say who the actor is, doesn't really matter, but anyway. He's like a poor, poor man's Red Brown. Very similar body type, very, very similar level of acting. Um, doesn't scream as much, but anyway. He's an undercover cop. He doesn't play by the rules. You know, there's the, the chief of police that throws the book at him, all that kind of stuff. And he works undercover, um, trying to um, protect a mob boss's daughter from a rival gang. And it's just got everything you'd expect from an 80s film, even though this is from 1990, it feels like 1984. It's so much fun, lots of gunfights, lots of stupid lines, lots of... Uh, there's kickboxing, this guy, whoever he is, he, he puts in some um, martial arts effort. Um, yeah, totally worth watching. Newly scanned and restored in 2K from 16mm archival elements. It is a full screen film, that's probably how it was shot. Uh, so it's 133 to 1. 
and yeah, Vinegar Syndrome just knocking out of the park. Out of nowhere, they come out with these low budget things that no one else is ever going to do. It's got a poster, which is it's just ridiculous. The amount of effort they've put into a movie like this, and I thank them very much for it. LA Wars, highly recommended. The Divine Fury, as is a relatively new uh, South Korean exorcist style film. Or at least a possession film. And that's about all I know at this point. The Bex Exorcist film in at least a decade. I'm sure it is. Most of the other ones I've seen, the Hollywood films, are pretty bad. So, um, and I like South Korean films for the most part. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing what they do with uh, this old um, story. Um, just reading from the back here. Uh, losing his father at a young age, a terrible in a terrible accident, Yong Hu abandons his Christian faith. There you go. Chooses to only believe in himself. Now, as an adult, he is a champion fighter. Yeah, there is some boxing-looking scenes in the trailer. Uh, has everything he's ever wanted until a mysterious wound appears in the palm of his hand. But Stigmata finds himself in the middle of a dangerous fight against otherworldly evil forces seeking to wreak havoc in the human world. And he gets some pretty cool-looking. Um, Pretty cool looking effects there. So yeah, this is the Divine Fury. Um, same cover underneath there. Put out by Wellgo USA. I like to keep an eye on this label. They keep putting out things like this. Um, very much specializing in um, Hong Kong or mainland China or South Korea or Japan um, for their films. And uh, yeah, Divine Fury. Looks really cool. If you've seen it, let me know. So does this one also from Wilgo, Samurai Marathon. Uh, it's billed as being a sword slasher. Samurai slasher, this is what I wanted to see. Um, this one just looks great. The trailer is as far as I've gotten with this one as well. Um, but it looks like it's going to be nice and violent. Uh, what country is this from? I think this is Japan. The Japanese film, yeah. From the director of Candyman. Hello. That's interesting. So anyway, oh, it's got Philip Glass music in it, so that's also very interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a lively action flick with a samurai twist in feudal Japan. So there you go, ninjas, um, and uh, yeah, this looks pretty good to me. Samurai Marathon. If you've checked it out, please let me know. This movie, I had on Laserdisc. Nobody else seems to like it but me. This is The Immortalizer. Um, there's a whole bunch of these films from the 80s, like uh, Rejuvenator was one. Obviously, Reanimator's a kind of thing, but um, there's more about the... Um, Immortalizer's more like Rejuvenator, where um, you know, mental doctor replaces brains in bodies with other people. Um, I think this one's good fun. Another nice slip there from uh, Vinny Syndrome. Classic art. They just I love that they've stayed with the poster. My Laserdisc had the same thing. There's no point to do uh, custom art, something like this. Um, yeah, just the disc and stuff in there, nothing too exciting. From what year is this? 1989. And uh, yeah, I recommend this one. I think it's good fun. But like I said, nobody else seems to really like it. Um, don't really know who's in it. It is a Joel Bender directed film who did The Gas Pump Girls. There you go, I didn't know he did that. So that's The Immortalizer. And um, definitely worth your time. I think you could probably still get this edition from Vinnie Syndrome with the slip, so uh, definitely get that. I recommend the film. Not sure if this one's still available. Probably gone already. Mr. Vampire, the uh, Eureka film uh, from the UK. Awesome slip on this one. Classic, classic Hong Kong supernatural horror comedy with the original poster art underneath there. The most genre-defining, most not to mention genre-defying, horror comedy imaginable, and one of the key Hong Kong blockbusters of the hits of the 80s. That's exactly right. So, <clears throat> this film, um, who's this one star again? Uh, that's directed by Ricky Lau. I've forgotten who is actually the star of the film. His name has just jumped off my tongue. And that's going to be very annoying. Um, Lam Ching Ying. There you go. Right. I knew I'd get there in a second. Um, and this is where your hopping vampires all come from. Mr. Vampire is definitely one of the films that uh, 
brought that out to the audience. Uh, it's an old, um, it's an old uh, part of the the supernatural history of uh, of China, the the hopping vampires. But um, a lot of movies started to do it around about this time, and uh, yeah, it's a it's great fun. It's got um, I think Moon Lee was in this one. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I think she was. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, watched it, so keen to check it out again. Replace my uh, my uh, Hong Kong Legends DVD with the new Blu-ray, remastered, of course, um, from 1985, and it is a 2K restoration. So there you go, lovely edition there from Eureka of Mr. Vampire. Got a couple of 88 Jackie Chan's here, Fearless Hyena. I don't remember this one whatsoever, to be honest. Maybe I haven't seen the Fearless Hyena. Um, original poster up. Loving that they're putting out these releases. 88 are doing a great job with Jackie Chan's. Eureka did some for a bit and I seem to have stopped. Now 88's doing most of them. So this one is from what year? 79? And uh, yeah, I think this is uh, meant to be quite a good one. So yeah, if I've seen it, I really don't recall this one at all. The Fearless Hyena. So yeah, anyway, there you go. Slipcase, um, new custom art. 2K restoration, multiple versions of the dialogue in Cantonese and English. Um, it's the best thing about 88 is they're really catering to all the crazy fans over the years. Every single different audio dub or flavor of the original um, soundtrack, they do their efforts to include them, so that's great. And the other one is Dragon Lord. Uh, this one I have seen, I don't remember a great deal about it. Um, but uh, again, that's that's a good thing that I've kind of forgotten some of these because I get to rewatch them in lovely Blu-ray. Um, another correct Jackie Chan from what year is this? Do I have a year? 1980, so I guess the year after. Fearless. And uh, yeah, custom art again, original poster, and a bunch of extras. Two cuts of the film. Uh, both from the original negatives in scope, uh, the Hong Kong cut, the work in progress cut, it's 103 minutes, that's very cool, and um, yeah, multiple audio and newly translated subtitles, so there you go, Dragon Lord, the next one in there, 88 films, Jackie Chan line. Got a couple of Sidaris. Oh dear. All these films are practically the same. Savage Beach and Picasso Trigger. So I'm playing catch up getting these. They're so cheap. They're the kind of thing that when I'm doing an order on Amazon, I chuck another one in. And in fact, there's another order coming now that's got two more. Um, there's about, I think there's about 11 or so in total, 11 or 12. And a couple more than not on Amazon yet. I forget which ones they are, but they'll be there soon enough. So there you go, Savage Beach and Picasso Trigger. You get exactly what is on the cover with these films. You get girls with boobs, you get guns, you get explosions. Cheap action and they're good, good fun. Um, Hot Ticket to Hawaii is the one that everybody seems to know the most. And um, yeah, cool. Two more to check out, Picasso Trigger and Savage Beach. So, this VFW and Bliss is a double feature uh, put out from Umbrella. This is the flipped cover. The um, original art is a bit more like the disc, like that. It's got uh, both films listed. Um, yeah, both of these uh, films are from uh, Joe Vigos. And uh, Bliss came out first, and it looked interesting, but I never jumped into it. But VFW looks sensational, and I've heard so many good things about it. Claustrophobic, um, sort of horror thriller um, with uh, these. Or VFW veterans of foreign wars all of these guys um, fighting off the bad guys outside the pub that they're uh, drinking at and apparently it gets quite mental and violent so I'm looking forward to particularly VFW and I'll watch uh, Bliss as well see what that one's like so there you go, nice little double set um, yeah, happy to have that one checking out VFW, definitely Hostage Australian film um Code Red put out a Blu-ray of this under the title Savage Attraction, and that was a shorter cut of the film, but I don't think anybody realised at the time. Then Umbrella did a remaster, and this is a longer cut of the film. So it's kind of a grimy, um, exploitation revenge film. Um, I watched 
the Savage Attraction Edition, um, I think when I first got it, and I don't remember a great deal about it, but um, re-watching the trailer again for this version, I got quite excited to check it out again. So yeah, Hostage. Um, what I've been learning with these Ozploitation titles, there's obviously some kind of limit on the pressing. It's I don't know how many, it'll be more than a thousand, but they've got to, they've got to top them out because they just vanish. A couple of them have vanished. Um, so if you want any of these films, I'd say definitely get on them earlier rather than later. They're not around forever. Um, yeah, 1974? 1974. That's Hostage, also known as Savage Attraction. Oh, what am I doing to myself? Deep Blue Sea 3. Uh, I haven't even watched number two yet. I got that on the shelf. Um, number three looks pretty good. It looks a bit more, at least from a trailer, it looks kind of like... Um, bait, like a bit more secluded, um, maybe it won't be, but that's what it kind of looks like to me. Yeah, it's that level above sci-fi channel, this is actually like put out by Warner Brothers, I don't know why they thought they should do two sequels to Deep Blue Sea, but here we are, that's the future we're in now. Um, this is dirt cheap, you can pick it up for about 15 at JB Hi-Fi, so yeah, if you feel game like I do, Deep Blue Sea 3. Another one from Dark Force and Code Red. This is Primal Rage. Final, I finally got an upgrade of this one. The DVD is not too bad, um, but the Blu-ray. I expect this to look a lot better. Um, brand new 2020 Master. And yes, yeah, so this is Italian horror. Um, good fun from the 80s. What year is this? 88. And it's got uh, uh, Claudio Seminetti from uh, Goblin Soundtrack. This is just good fun. Good fun, we're the big ape. That's that's what you want. Crazy ape. And blood soaked, stomach churning, gory Italian horror. Primal rage. The DVD was um, really hard to get for the longest time, and then I got it, and then now we have a Blu-ray, so very cool. Um, I think they might be low on copies, so go to darkforceentertainment.com and grab yourself a copy of Primal Rage. Don't think it's got a wide release. Got a few of these cheapies from a friend of mine who was selling them. Um, he collected Shout Factory and related titles, but he didn't want any more of the um, sort of direct DVD versions they do from like the IFD. Can't remember the name of the label that they do. Can't remember, but anyway. First one I got is Animal. This looks pretty good. I don't know. Looks fun to me. Um, hopefully that's going to be like proper creature effects and not just some CG garbage but anyway uh, this looks interesting animal from 2014 pretty cool again I don't know a great deal about it but it looks interesting fairly pointless slip because the art underneath is exactly the same um, directed by Brett Simmons who did the monkey's paw don't know who that is um, and various people who I've never heard of somebody from return to sleepaway camp that doesn't really give you any favors there um, and the music by the guy that did Resident Evil Afterlife. Jeez, this is just a mix of who? Anyway, entertaining and creepy, tightly paced and breezy horror film that delivers fantastic monster effects. Well, that is a good sign. When they actually say good monster effects, it's going to be prosthetics. So there you go. That is Animal. Hopefully it's good. Next one, Dead Souls. This one also looks fairly interesting. Um, from the novel by two-time Bram Stoker Award finalist Michael Lamo. His name is Michael Lamo. I hope he's not too lame. Anyway, Dead Souls. This is from 2012. Uh, it's a Chiller TV. Yeah, there you go. Chiller TV production. That's Shout Factory's put out. So there you go. Don't know a great deal about it, but it looks fairly interesting. Stars Jesse James from the Amityville Horror. There you go. Somebody that actually has a name. Ah, oh, Bill Mosley's in this one. No pictures of Bill Mosley. Usually when he's in it, they throw him on the cover. There you go. That is Dead Souls. Looks pretty cool. Ha! DVD upgrade. Ape. <laughs> I don't know why I got this. Um, <laughs> HD Ape. This one is silly as. This is as dumb as a bag of hammers. 1976. 36-foot um, ape. It's, you know... It's a King Kong ripoff, obviously, and um, yeah, I, 
what else am I going to say? What country is this from? Is this American? I think it is. Anyway, apparently it's got a 3D version. Not that I can watch that, but... Um, oh. In case anyone open that, there's nothing in there to look at anyway. So there you go. Sea Ape in 3D, 1976. From Paul Leder. Now, who is Paul Leder? I don't know. But... Um, Oh, somebody from the Screaming Skull, isn't it? So there you go, Ape. Looks kind of interesting. Um, and I didn't ever watch the DVD that I had, so we're going to see what Ape is like. And I expect it to be very cheesy. Queen of Blood. It's a vision film. So I actually think this is a fairly modern film. Yeah, 2014. So that's that's pretty interesting. Um, I think this might have been the first Blu-ray that Intervision put out, and I never bothered to pick it up, but my mate was selling it on very cheap, so there you go. Um, from writer, director, composer Chris Alexander, the editor-in-chief of Fangoria, so there you go. I used to like the, uh, the Fangoria-produced films. Um, Mind Wolf is probably the best one. So this is uh, Queen of Blood. Macabre and effectively creepy. Interesting. Um... And it has, what, somebody in it from Skinny Puppy? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Opus of the Undead like you've never seen. Mm, okay, well there you go. Hopefully we've got some zombie action. Don't know much about Queen of Blood, but anyway, the cover looks pretty cool. Battery. This made a bit of a song and dance when it came out a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe a few years ago now. Um, yeah, another you know modern zombie film, uh, 2013. Yeah, actually a little while ago. I never got around to watching this. Um, I had the DVD on the shelf for the longest time, and um, kept meaning to pick it up. And I was never in a zombie mood. And then um, Blu-rays landed in my lap, so now I can upgrade and put it on the shelf and hopefully actually get to it. Anyway, um, yeah. What do we know about this one? Um, I think it's quite a small cast of characters. Yeah, it sounds pretty. It sounds pretty small, but that's good. Might be sort of a you know Walking Dead style, you know, main cast small, rather than um, boring like that damn show. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know much about battery, but it does look pretty cool. Had a reverse cover art, uh, which I thought was absolutely terrible. You see it underneath there. Really didn't like that, so I flipped it around, and this is the poster art so there you go battery um, if anybody's seen the battery let me know how it is the next one we got here is called ejector it's a science fiction uh, alien invasion invasion or um, abduction I know, probably one of the two um, science fiction ride yeah alien abduct alien abduction I can't speak tonight ejector we were never alone sounds pretty interesting came out in 2015 um, alien abduction films are always things that I kind of enjoy. They've never hit the highs of um, Fire in the Sky, of course, again, but um, I always live in hope that we're going to get a good one. Maybe we'll get a good one with the ejector. Um, it's got somebody from Exit Humanity in it. That was a good film. Um, somebody from Pontypool. Oh, and Dee Wallace from The Howling. Dee Wallace is in this. That's really interesting. So there you go. That is um, Ejector, and uh, yeah, not seen it, if you have, let me know. And the last one, the last one I just got my mate to chuck in the pile. This is Rabid Dogs, which is a remake of the 1974 Mario Bava film, which fills me with dread to be honest, but you know, we will see. Um, yeah, that's about all I could really say so far is that it's a remake of the 74 classic. Um, I don't actually own the classic, I don't know why. Is there no good Blu-ray of it? Is that maybe why I don't have it? Anyway, probably something I need to look into. But now I have the remake, hooray. Hopefully it's not terrible. Um, and... Yeah, that's about all I know. It's got, um... Lambert Wilson, he was in Dante 01 apparently. Dante 01 was an interesting film. I haven't watched that in years. Um... Yeah, it's got making of and all that kind of stuff. This is from 2015, so there you go. The remake of Rabbit Dogs from 1974, Mario Barber's film. Hopefully it's any good. And I'm leaving the best ones to last. Two box sets. This one, 
Man, I was excited when they announced this. This is Vinegar Syndrome's Forgotten Jali box set. What a glorious box this is. Just physically at the box. Pops up from the top, like that. It's got the knife blade edge, the blood dripping off it. Really, really, really cool. Um, and the films we get, um, and they are Forgotten Charlie. We've got Trauma, which when I remember looking for this film 15 years ago, it was spelled Thrauma, had a H in it. Uh, the Police Are Blundering in the Dark, which is obscenely rare. And The Killer is One of 13, which is also damn rare. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I was always hoping Vinegar Syndrome would start looking looking uh, to release. Obscure giallo, stuff that has only ever existed on um, like French VHS and Dutch VHS and things like that. So the police are blundering in the dark. The killer is one of 13. And trauma. So I think I watched a dodgy, dodgy VHS rip of this one a long time ago. And I don't think I ever tried to watch either of the other ones. Um, yeah. I don't remember much about uh, 13 anyway, but Police are Blundering in the Dark from uh, Helia Colombo. I don't know who that director is. In what year is this? 75. And stars Joseph Arkin, Francisco Cortez, Gabriela Giorgelli. I'm sure I got that wrong. But it has nude models, so that's a win. Uh, Trauma. Uh, this one's from 78. Directed by uh, Leon Klimovsky, which does not make it sound very Italian, so I don't know where this one's from. Spanish, here you go. And um, yeah, Spanish one, Trauma. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure I saw it written as Trauma with a H at some point. So there you go. Very cool to check that one out. And The Killer is one of 13. Um, this one is from uh, Javier Aguirre and is a Spanish one as well. Spanish, Spanish take on Agatha Christie's oft-adapted novel. That's why I know the title. There you go. Um, and then there were none. Exploitation, blah, 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 blah. And top genre film stars from Spain, including Patty Shepard from Rest in Pieces. I like Patty Shepard. Um, and Jack Taylor from Fe Female Vampire, don't know that. And oh, Paul Nash is in a supporting role. I wonder how little is in it, but anyway, there you go. The Killer is one of 13. Very, very nice box set there from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. And it does happily say on the front, oh, I've got that backwards. It does say on the front, volume one. So I'm really hoping that they do a second volume. These are the things that are going to go right to the top of my list to check out because I love seeing Obscure Giallo and uh, Spanish ones are always kind of extra dirty so there you go, Forgotten Giallo. And the last one, this is another awesome and entirely related set. Uh, this is the uh, Complete Lindsay Baker Giallo collection. So all the films that uh, Carol Baker and, uh, and Lindsay put together, we have Orgasmo, uh, so Sweet, So Perverse, A Quiet Place to Kill, and Knife of Ice. Um, now, there's always that confusion with the film um, Orgasmo, and I've already forgotten what the deal is with that. I think A Quiet Place to Kill and Orgasmo are both called Orgasmo, and that's what the confusion was. Um, so much so that I think when uh, 88 Films... If I've got it up there somewhere. When 88 Films were putting out their version of Paranoia, um, which is also called Orgasmo, I think that's what happened here. And when they put out their version, their original um, blurb they put on their website was for the other film. And they said, sorry, we're actually releasing the other one. It's all such a mess. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so you get... Um, I think I'm doing that right, Orgasmo is paranoia. Anyway, the whole lot is confusing. Get some cool cards, Knife of Ice, Quiet Place to Kill, So Sweet, So Perverse, and Orgasmo. So there you go. All films with Carol Baker. Love the black cases too. So there you go. That is the 
four films in this Severin or Severin box. And the nice art cards that come with it. So there you go. That is another one I put on backwards. That is the uh, complete Lindsay and Baker Charlo box set. So very nice. Um, yeah, I think that's all we've got today. And um, yeah, as I said, I haven't had a great deal of time to actually watch a lot of these films. So it's just been more of a show and less of a tell. But hopefully next time I will have been able to watch some of the films. Thanks for watching. See you next time.